It's been nearly 20 years now since the seven-member crew of the Shuttle Columbia were lost in tragedy. I have Richard Trabu here with me, and today NASA is commemorating with the Day of Remembrance. And Richard, you were at an event there at Kennedy Space Center, and they reflected on the day and those crew members lost. Tell me about it. Well, uh, the ceremony featured uh, Bob Cabana, who's a former uh, director of Kennedy Space Center. He's now um, the deputy administrator uh, for NASA. Um, but he was he was actually at Kennedy waiting for Columbia to land. Uh, and he, in his role at the time, he he dealt with the astronauts and their families, and he had some very sobering remarks. Um, but just uh, great memories of some of the individuals. Um, you know, he mentioned uh, that uh, Rick Husband, the the commander, uh, he was um, he called him a great Christian man, but uh, he. He got uh, everybody in a circle and, and had a prayer that involved not only Christians, but um, Hebrew, because an Israeli astronaut, Elon Ramon, was there, um, as well as a Hindu, uh, as one of the crew members was, was that as well. And, and he talked about Mike Anderson and his, the two beautiful daughters he had at the time that, were, that are all grown up now, and Laurel Clark, um, who said that was uh, the go-to person to fix any issue with the TV. So he really knew these people, and you could tell um, that he was still hurting, even though it's two decades later. I just, I, I really have to to, to talk about um, the invocation that was done by uh, the rabbi, uh, who was a friend of Elon Ramon, and he uh, really brought up some fantastic memories. 20 years ago, Elon turned to me with a question. How does one mark the Sabbath in space? With every 90 minutes, another sunset. Every 10 and a half hours is Sabbath. And every 20 days is the new year, the Jewish new year, Rosh Hashanah. Jerusalem, we have a problem. <laughs> so I had my homework to do. But Ilan taught us a powerful message. No matter how fast we're going, no matter how important our work, we must pause and think about why we're here on earth. The day was quite moving with these memories, uh, really focused on Columbia, although there's also paying deference to the seven who died on Space Shuttle Challenger, the three who died on the Apollo 1 uh, launch pad, as well as others uh, who died in test uh, flights and whatnot, 25 people overall. Yeah, as far as this annual remembrance that they do, this day of remembrance, what is what is the message they're trying to get across when they do this? You know, that's that's the, Bob Cabana was very much asking the same question, like, why do we do this every year? And it's not only to honor the people that that had died over the years, but he said that less than 50 percent of the current NASA workforce was probably with NASA when the space shuttle program ended in 2011. So the problem with that is every year more and more people retire and those memories of those incidents that really drove people to re embrace the need for safety. And he was almost angry when talking. Uh, you know, he's like, he wants to make sure that everybody in today's NASA workforce knows that they can speak up. I'm never going to forget them. All right. And I don't want anybody to forget. I want it to be personable. I want everybody to feel what I felt knowing that crew so that we remember and we don't forget that we don't make the mistakes of the past as we move forward, exploring beyond our home planet, exploring the cosmos, establish a presence in our solar system beyond planet Earth as we go back to the moon. I mean, it's been 20 years. And that's actually the longest period of time between these major incidents because it was 19 years and a day between Apollo 1 and Challenger. It was 17 years uh, between Challenger and Columbia. So now it's been two decades with uh, no m major incident. Right, right. And I, I imagine that that brings challenges now. It seems like space, space flight is getting even more complex, a lot more, It's I would say, launches going on at this point. And I imagine that's got to be in the back of everyone's mind. Well, it's, it's, it's very complex now because not only, you know, 
in NASA's history has always been one space vehicle. And now we're dealing with commercial companies. You have SpaceX with their Dragon. You have Boeing with Starliner that's going to launch with astronauts in a couple of months. You have Orion capsule as part of space launch system that will bring astronauts to the moon and beyond. You have private companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic uh, that are sending uh, private astronauts up into to space as well. And so you have just a lot more players. And, you know, there's been uh, more than 600 people that have gone to space in 60 years, but that number is likely to double uh, before the end of this decade. So it's, uh, it's going to be busy. There's going to be a lot of complexity, a lot of different hardware, and a lot of different players. And at some point, we hope that nothing happens, but that's the goal of NASA now is to, where they can, remind people the lessons learned.